Hello everyone, this is CG Novo 992 and today we are back for another brand new video. Today's video brings me so much joy to be able to sit here and say to you that finally we are back as always to break down, react and discuss to the latest Rangers game. A Rangers game that saw yet another strong professional performance from the Glasgow Rangers and it's that word professional there that I really want to focus on and where I want to lean because listen we all know going into this game that it was like 99.9.9.55% sure that we were going to win this game pretty easily. We just knew that best team in Scotland versus a lower league opposition but you can only ever beat what's in front of you and what I really saw in this Rangers team and in this performance is a difference in mindset again under Steven Gerrard this squad is just different because so many times over the years hell in fact we even saw this game last year that 2-0 win versus Stranraer do you remember what it was like no intensity no one really bust and we got the job done because again we should be getting the job done versus lower tier opposition but for me the performances in a year on you can really see what Gerard has installed in this team and it's finally clicked for every single player he's got the squad now not even just the 11 he's got the squad the exact way he wants some and that is absolutely starving for minutes and they'll do anything they can no matter the opposition to prove that they belong at this football club. And all that right there for me is really, really important because it shows no matter who is selected, every single person buys into this idea and they will give absolutely everything. This thing that Gerard's installed at Rangers, this ruthless, rampant Rangers side, isn't only for the La League games or the Europa League. No, it's for every single game when you pull on the Rangers shirt. And I love that we saw that again today because what did it finish, right? 4 0 overall, probably a wee bit disappointed we didn't score more goals, especially considering I picked a 5 now yesterday's preview video. But we'll leave that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm cursed. I'm cursed. But still, we saw 26 shots in the game of football and we saw even more goal scoring opportunities and crosses than that in the game it was really a ruthless performance that even when we went one or two nil up we kept going we kept plugging and we kept creating chances right enough right until pretty much the end of the game so i am not going to sit here and poke holes at the game and be overly negative i'm going to be happy ladies and gentlemen not only are rangers back playing football after a very torturous international break but we saw some players go out there and play a couple of very impressive performances and we saw players get opportunities that we wanted to see and that leads us directly to our boy Scotty Wright. I talked about it in the preview yesterday and by god did he go ahead and grab that chance with Bay fans because I'm sure there was about maybe about the 48 third minute or something like that. I sat back and said to the missus I was like how many Scott Wrights have you got on the park? Because the boy was literally everywhere. And that's exactly what these early cup rounds should be. Players that hasn't quite been in and amongst the first 11, getting that opportunity and going ahead and grabbing. No walking about, keeping their head down, just seeing the game out because it's done. No, you want players to go in there and hungry. And for me, every player that went on that park showed that intensity. And speaking of players on that park, by the way, we mentioned in yesterday's preview video the fact that the Rangers had appealed to SFA charge, which meant that Patterson, Bassi and Zongu would be eligible to play in this game. And we were pretty sure that Bassi, Zongu and <laughs> Patterson would play in the game. And it nearly, nearly happened. Unfortunately for Zongu, though, he picked up a minor knock just a couple of days before the game. So that kind of ruled him out. But for me, Patterson and Bassi back in to the start in 11, even though I know Parsons been playing. But for me, the, them all night was just running, running, running. You see the youthful, and you see the hunger, and you see the quality out these two lads, and that's absolutely tremendous shit house they appealing it, then going ahead and playing it. And the fact he's went and scored, by the way, <laughs> Delicious. But right, before we go ahead and cut into that main course of shit house array from our boy Nathan Parson, let's go back to the start then, shall we? Because we saw some very, very good goals. And I think the, the game started the way we were all expecting. Rangers coming out, getting after them, putting pressure on them and causing Cove Rangers into mistakes. And the boys who sat in and tuned in to yesterday's preview video, I'm not one to took my horn, ladies and gentlemen, but we absolutely nailed it. Cove Rangers would give us opportunities because they love to play out for the back. And if we were hungry and we were nipping after them, we would cause issues and after a very bright opening 10 minutes that saw us hit the bar from Kamal Roof have a couple of very close opportunities from Scotty Wright one where he took it down not make the boy and he shot just went a whisker wide we finally got our breakthrough and it was once again 
putting pressure on the opposition and hunting them down, even though it is a lower tier game. We never took our foot off the gas and that's how we got the first goal in this game. Putting pressure on them, they try and pass it, it goes straight to Glenn Kamara, whose first time pass is directly at JD and Defoe takes a nice wee touch on it, flicks it by a player and then he's got Kamal Roof here screaming for the ball. And when I say screaming, ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about screaming. He is so wide open, but Jermaine Defoe decided to rock it, right? And it's funny when you go back and you look at it because as JD hit that ball, you can see Kamal Roof reacting, getting angry. Then as it got closer and closer to the goal, he went, <laughs> honestly, man, that reaction for Roof and the, the split change in facial expression deserves an Emmy nomination, but the actual goal itself, I'm not giving any justice to it either. It's it's a rocket, it's a screamer, and Jermaine Defoe hasn't scored many from outside the box, but whenever it happens, it's usually a brilliant one, and it certainly was this. A rocket, 25, maybe 30 yards out, bottom bin, goalie can't get there, and that sets us on our way. So we finally got the breakthrough in the 23rd minute of this game, and yes, was it heavily expected? Absolutely, but do you honestly think that takes anything away from the fact that it was a Rangers goal for me? No, it means a lot. It was a screamer. I'm happy and I'm smiling and I was smiling even wider just seven minutes after we got that breakthrough because once again, Jermaine Defoe heavily involved in everything that we were doing in the night. He gets his head up. He picks out Scotty Arfield, by the way, showing that partnership that they had. If you go back two years now when him and Arfield was linking up very, very well for Rangers when they were starting with the guy leading the line, Jermaine Defoe and Arfield very close to them. They've still got that very strong partnership and they always know where each other are. That's just two experienced players, two clever experienced players just working off each other and Jermaine Defoe finds him with the ball. Arfield, smart little shot. It's very well saved by the goalkeeper, by the way, but unfortunately for the goalkeeper, Kamal Roof just far too sharp for the defender because he nips right in, he slaps it in for 2-0. And that was Kamal Roof's first goal in the game. And when you think about the match so far, we had to wait 23 long minutes for the opener and then seven minutes after that for the second one. But we didn't have to wait barely any time for the third one because I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not lying, I'm not scripting this at all. Within 55 seconds of the restart, Kamal Roof was slapping it in for the second one and Rangers were absolutely ruthless. Spelled R-O-O-F-E. I feel dirty after that. Now, I know what you're thinking, ladies and gentlemen. Could that get any cringier and worse than what I just did there? Probably no. And also, do I know how to spell less? Because I skipped that. I don't know why. But for those that are still here and somehow made it through that dreadful, awful joke, the next moment was going to be the last goal in the game. And if you'd have told me that at that point, I genuinely wouldn't have believed you. But if it was going to be the last goal, the fact that it was Nathan Parson to score, it just tickles the old plump bags, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a brilliant goal as well. And it shows you where he is just mentally as well, because it's good pressure down the left-hand side originally from Rangers, once again, Cove Rangers, Chani play out. But what I love is, this wasn't a thing where he was just standing here and he nips in and goes and scores. You go back and you look at it, especially from the side view, he's 10, 15 yards away. He's got his man away out on the right-hand side, but he sees the game. His intelligence, he knows that that ball's going to come over here. And you see him, he starts sprinting before the Cove Rangers boys even turn around to pass it. And for that, that makes this goal really damn impressive and very, very underrated. And that shows you the intelligence a young Parson because he goes early and he gets his reward for that anticipation as well. And when he does nip in front of the defender and go 1v1 with the goalkeeper, he actually finishes it with the outside of his foot, putting it right in, nestling inside the post. That goal there, every aspect, every bit of that goal is top, top quality and so is that laddie. And again, as we've already mentioned, that was the last goal in the game and it was obviously the last goal in the half and I think going into the second half, we all knew that we just wanted to see Mayer Hings in. If I'm honest, we, we still approached the game the right way. We still had Scotty Wright popping up left, popping up right, make me go, where is he now? Where is he now? He was everywhere on the park and his link-up play with Hadji when he came on in the middle of the park for the replacement of Stephen Davis. Their link-up in the centre of the park was gorgeous to watch. You had Parson making positive runs. You, made, you had Bassey 
down the left hand side making selfless runs and that as well so it wasn't as if we took our foot off the gas and we just saw the game out we were still creating opportunities but it was either a defensive block or the pass was just slightly behind because honestly Scotty Wright put in about four or five delicious crosses in that second half but we just weren't in the right places and we just didn't have that last bit of luck that you need in a game of football for it to fall your way. And the longer the second half went on, the more changes that was eventually made in the game of football. We saw Kamal Roof, who was on a hat-trick, be substituted, but we know where he is fitness-wise. It's all about getting minutes under his belt. He ran his race, and he's starting to look sharp. Long may that build-up continue for that lad. And I thought Eton came on and played pretty well, but again, he was just unlucky in front of goal. Twice, he'd done a smart wee turn, but his shot was blocked and deflected just wide, it's just no fun for the big lad you know. but you might remember earlier on in today's video, I said that we were still at it in the game, still had bite pretty much to the end of the game, well I actually think with this injury that happened to the Cove Rangers player, that was the real end of the game, because that can show you what can happen in a cup game of football, where it's just so unfortunate for the laddie, because he's trying to get back, he's trying to keep up with Scotty Wright, and he goes over on his knee, and I don't know the extent of the injury, but it really, really doesn't look good, so I'm hoping the laddie gets back playing football very soon, and hopefully the injury isn't as serious as it first looked and first feared, the man had to be stretched off after about six or seven minutes of care, it certainly doesn't look good, ladies and gentlemen, but that was a wee timely reminder how quickly things can turn for a player, and for me, I just thought the bite of the game was lost when that boy went down with that very, very serious injury, again, we still had chances, I mean, Greg Stewart came on, looked very sharp, Connor Golton had a couple of shots, one of them, where he ballooned it just over the barrier, Scotty Arfield rifling shots every time he touched ball, we were still trying, but the overall quality and the bite in the game was lost in that injury, in my opinion, and that's why I think we didn't see that goal in the last 10, 15 minutes of the game, and that is how the game actually finished, Rangers 4, Cove Rangers now, when we march on to the fourth round, where we will have a home game versus Celtic. But before we go ahead and wrap up today's video and I hand the reins over to you guys for your opinion, I want to mention our boy Alfredo Morelos because honestly I was in stitches in that second half watching him in the stands. I don't know if you saw the footage, I'm sure you would have. If no, it's all your social media. But he's taking bits of his tape off and he's just rattling it at Tavernier and you can see Tavernier laughing and he's shaking his head and everything like that. That's something that Tav's spoken a lot about, the fact that Morelos is that joker, is that class clown, if you want to call him that, in the dressing room, but in the best way possible, and it's just brilliant to see our lads go and put a strong performance like that, and you can see the boys, it's no getting game time, and it's no getting on the park, still sitting there with massive smiles on their faces, no being raging or upset, and putting any negative vibes, no, everyone is in sync with this Rangers team, we saw on the park, and we saw it off the park. I was in tears laughing at Alfredo, <laughs> rattling them with tape. And that's what I'm going to leave it with, ladies and gentlemen. Very positive on and off the park for the Glasgow Rangers. If you're talking in man of the matches, for me, there was a couple of candidates. I thought Kamara was very good on his 55th appearance for the Glasgow Rangers, by the way. I thought Nathan Parson was outstanding down the right-hand side. But I need to give it to my guy, Scotty Wright. Yes, he didn't go ahead and grab a goal, but he'd done everything. But, ladies and gentlemen, and with the bits I've talked about in today's video, I'm not even doing it justice. You talk about giving a player a chance and saying, right, go and show me something. Doesn't matter the opposition. Show me your quality. He did for every single second he was on the park. And I'm very excited to see what this laddie can go on to do in a Ranger shot because as he gets fitter and as he gets sharper, <laughs> That on one side, we Ryan Kent on the other. That right there makes for a happy CG. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to keep this video a little bit shorter as it is an early cup game. But again, the fourth round now gets a wee bit spicy versus Celtic. What do you think of the draw? What do you think of the game? Who was your man of the match? Make sure you be diving in the comment section and sharing your opinion. And if you didn't mind, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't mind hitting the like button, that helps it come up in the old recommendation. on e on e ons And as always, ladies and gentlemen, that's me all officially done and dusty with today's video. Take care of yourselves. All the best. I'll see you in the next one. And bye-bye.